It's good as I look around this morning and see everybody and to know that, that we have an opportunity. We're blessed to be able to be here and be in God's house. Amen. On Saturday, let me just cover this real quick. On Saturday, uh, we're going to meet down here for everybody that wants to, to come and be a, be a part. We're going to meet about 8.30 and have us a biscuit and, and some uh, uh, time. And we're going to have a community uh, outreach day. We're going we're gonna to go into the, the neighborhood here and, and, and just do anything we can to help with a uh, little cleanup, little things that we can do just to go, you know what, let folks know that, that we're here to help and, and just to love. And so we're going gonna to start that. We're going to be down here about 8.30 to 8, and then we'll go about, about 9 o'clock and go around and do uh, what we're going to do. If you can come be a part at any time, we have a, uh, a little clipboard out on at the uh, Connection Corner that you can just sign up so we can kind of know how many we got and, and how many biscuits and all that to have. We'd love for you to come and be a part. Uh, you don't have to, to stay all day. We know that that afternoon there's some football games on. So we know that, uh, that, that uh, uh, different ones will have different things to do. But if you want to come and be a part, we're just going to go. We help some folks. So I know we've checked the na- neighborhood and we got some elderly folks that got some limbs and stuff that's failed. We're just going to go and uh, be a part just to help. Also, if you've seen the tree out front, we got our angel tree out there. We talked to our students at the Center of Hope and about going forth and to fulfilling the commitment they made to, to be uh, at the Center of Hope for the, the time, for the year. And we know, as we always share, that their children don't want them home just this Christmas. They want them home every Christmas. So they're doing what they need to do in order to be able to be that, to be uh, the daddies and the mothers to be there. So what we've asked them to do is to allow God to show them that he'll take care of them while they take care of what they need to take care of. So we got some angels out there on that tree. And, uh, and, and uh, my daughter will be out there in the Connection Corner at the uh, end of service. If you want to adopt an angel or angels, or you can get them all. Amen. She'll, she'll have you some angels out there for you to adopt. And she'll explain to you even more what it is. And on... Uh, December, help me out, Sheila, 20th, December 20th, uh, at 5 o'clock on Sunday evening, we're going to have our our birthday celebration for Jesus, amen. We're going to come in and celebrate Jesus' birthday. (laughs) So we're going to... Uh, to that, 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 that time, you will, if you've never been to one of our, our celebrations, our Christmas party, y'all, I promise you this, you won't, you, you won't leave d- disappointed. Uh, we'll see some things that take place where you see families come together and see children meet uh, mamas and daddies at these altars to, to just to see where God has used you to bless in a wonderful way. So I encourage you to get involved and, and talk, uh, talk to her afterwards, see about the angels and and. and Pray about it. See what God would have you to do. Amen. Open your Bibles with me in 2 Kings chapter 2. It's a message I've had on my heart for a little while. This week God began to speak to me on some things. So 2 Kings chapter 2, you get there, say amen. God's word says, so he said... You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Father, we're so grateful, so thankful unto you for this wonderful day and opportunity and time that you've given us to be here. Father, to be in your house, to be with you, to be with one another. And again, as always, we thank you for honest with your presence and your glory. And Father, we thank you that we know today that we're not here by chance, we're not here by coincidence, we're here by divine appointment. Father, we're asking for your help to receive everything that you have for us. We pray that you give us ears to hear, hearts to receive, and minds to focus. We bind every hindrance and every distraction here in Jesus' name. We pray that you help us not only to be hearers of this word, but be doers of this word. And as always, let it be all of you and none of me, and let your word do exactly as you plan and purpose. And we love you, we thank you, we praise you, and ask it all. In your son Jesus' precious and holy name. Everybody say it. Amen. God titled this message, You Have to Endure to Get the Prize. Amen. Now, how many knows that, that everybody wants to be blessed? 
We all want to be blessed. Amen. And I've shared this many, many times with you. If you don't want God's blessings, I want you to do this for me right now. I want you to stop. I'll give you just a minute. I want you to stop and say a little prayer and say, God, I don't want my blessings. Give them to Pastor Gary. Amen. If you don't want them, I'll take them. So, so, so everybody, everybody wants to be blessed. Everybody wants good things in their life. Amen. And when I say good things, y'all, I'm not just talking about stuff. I'm not just talking about, about, about personal stuff. I'm talking about when I say good things, I'm talking about the, the you know, from, from the, the fruits of the Spirit. The, you know what? What's this? If you've ever experienced the peace of God, you know that there ain't nothing more awesome. Amen. We want those things in our life, and we want them all the time. We want the good things. We want good things in our life. Now, I thought about this when I was sharing this. If I preach blessing, message every, blessing, blessing messages every time I got up here, we'd have to go to two services, wouldn't we? Amen, because everybody go out and tell everybody, man, they talk about good stuff down there. And we do. We talk about Jesus. Amen. We like good stuff. But how many knows it takes? It takes something. It takes us doing something in order to receive the good stuff. It takes something. It takes us doing something to get it. Now, some folks don't want to talk about that. Some folks don't, want, don't like to hear that part. And I'm going to say this to you, and I've sh- said it many times. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Amen. I'm going to break out in a Dr. John song. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Some of you going right now, come, come back, come back, come back. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Y'all, let me say this to you. When I say that we, we like stuff, we don't just want stuff, but we like the good stuff. Amen. God's Word says every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. We like the good stuff. We like God's promises, what God has, what God says He wants to do for us. We like the extra. Amen. We like John 10 and 10 on the other side of the comma. We like the abundance. We like the abundant stuff of, of, of what God has. You know what? From the fruits of His Spirit, the peace, the love, the joy, the happiness, the, the, the things that God says, the promises of God that God's Word says is both yea and amen for us. All the good things that God says that He wants to do for His children, that's what we want. We've heard about the promises, and we want all of them. We want all the promises. We want God to fulfill what He said He'd do in our life. And we're going to talk about the good stuff today. We're going to talk about how to get it. We're going to talk about how those things that I'm talking about comes our way. Y'all excited now, amen? Oh, we're going to talk about good stuff. Amen. Somebody talking about, well, I, boy, I'm telling old so-and-so next week, I'm inviting them to come with us. He talked about the good stuff. Amen. Hold on, there's more. Before you get all excited. Everybody wants blessings. Everybody wants the blessings. Everybody wants the good stuff. We, we like the good stuff. We like what God said he's going to do. We like for God to work in our life. We like for God to do the things he said he'd do. But the, but the, 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 the question that I have and, and, and the truth of the matter is this. Are we willing to do, is everybody willing to do what it takes to have those things in our life? Above and below every, every promise of God is a command. It's something that we need to do, something we need to fulfill. I knew it'd go quiet now. Amen. Somebody say, I got to do something. Yeah, we have a part, y'all. We have a part. As I said, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. But I got some good news for you. Our part's not hard. Our part is not hard, or it shouldn't be. What God has has, has called upon or required upon us is not hard, y'all. And, and, and let me just stop right there and talk for a few minutes. When I say it's not hard, you know, you would hear some Christians say, oh, man, it is. It's a struggle. It's a battle. You know what? I would say to that, and, 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 and please love me. I'm not saying this in a bad way. But you know what? Come out of the religion. Get in a relationship. 
Amen. Come out of the religion and get in a relationship. You see, religion is what's made it hard for Christians. Man's tradition and man's religion, the rules and the regulations that man has put out there, that man says you got to do this to be a Christian, you got to do that. You know what? I don't have to be a Christian. Praise God, I wake up every day and get to be one. Amen. I get to be one every day. I'm not getting up every day trying to make sure I do the right thing. You know what? I wake up every day and I love God because he first loved me. And I, I want to go forth and do, you know what, what's pleasing unto him, not because of what he can do for me, but because, you know what, I'm so grateful and thankful for what he's done for me. Can somebody hear me? I'm so grateful and thankful. Amen. It's okay to praise him. You know what, I'm so grateful and thankful for what he's done for me. Come out of the religion. You know, it's that part that says, man, I got to do this and I got to do that. Those folks that woke up this morning said, man, I got to go to church. No, I don't got to go. I get to go. And let me say this to you. Some folks is mad about this morning. They said, God, you said you were sending me a comforter. And I'm up under it. Now you're making me leave it. <laughs> Amen. I was comfortable with my comforter. But y'all, to understand the reason that, 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 that people think it's hard to be a Christian, the reason that people think, first and foremost, you know what, let me say this to you. People have lost, they don't, they don't know the real definition of Christian, and people have started, they tried to follow the preacher, or they tried to follow the, the church, or tried to follow the building, and tried to follow the people, and that's hard, y'all. But to be a Christian is to follow Jesus, to be Christ-like. And, and so, you know what? You get, you get in a place, if, if you get caught in the religion part of it, you know what? You stay frustrated. Can I get a witness? Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Somebody's been there. You know what? You stay, you get frustrated. You know what? All of a sudden, somebody or something takes place. And every time that you think you get in the head, boom, something comes knock you backwards because of the religion instead of the relationship. Amen. Relationships built on two things. Love and trust. Amen. It's not built on a religion. It's not built on it's built on two things, love and trust. That's the foundation. If we love God and trust God, praise God, you know what? You're going to be happy in God. Amen. Because it's in a relationship. Religion is built on rules and regulations. How are you supposed to do it? How many times are you supposed to do it? Where are you supposed to do it? Until it gets to that place and a point that it's just like the world. It comes out of a rut and routine. It's the same old, same old. I like it. You know what? That, that God does something different every day. I like it that, that, that we can be real and be who God made us to be. Y'all didn't come out of that often and say, okay, I got to go out here and be the preacher. I got to act like this. I can't say ain't. I tell you all the time, God changed my life. He didn't change my English. Amen. He brought me from where he brought me from, and I won't never forget where he brought me from, and I thank God for it, but I am who I am. You know what? I, I love y'all, but I seek to please him. Amen. Galatians 1 and 10 says, if I seek to please man, I can't be a servant of Christ. Now, that was just, that was the extra part of the message. That's called lanyop. Lanyop means a little something extra. And that's, that's Cajun talk, in case you didn't know. But to understand that, that y'all, if, 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 if serving God has come, become hard for you, you've got to get out of religion, get in the relationship part of it. Amen. Okay, let's look at this scripture. And let me take you all the way back to Elijah and Elisha. Elijah was a prophet of God, anointed by God, highly favored by God, filled with the Spirit of God. And one day he was walking by, and Elisha was out in the field, and Elijah had two oxen, and he had all the stuff to do and had this, all this, this, this big field and everything, which meant that he had a lot. And he was plowing in the field, 
And Elijah walked by him, and he told Elisha, come on, follow me. Y'all, this can relate so much to our life and our walk. He said, follow me, and he threw his mantle on him, threw his coat over him. And it said Elijah stopped what he was doing. He said, let me go back and tell everybody bye, because this is it. And he said he took the, all the, the oxen he had, and he killed them, and he took all the, 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 uh, the plow and everything, and he, and he burned it to cook the, the food. In other words, to make sure that he, he gave up everything. When he surrendered to him, when he surrendered to follow, he gave it all up. What's this? That he, that he made sure that he wasn't trusted in nothing else. So if this don't work, I can return back to this. No, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm sold out. I'm gone. I'm going forward. I'm following, and I ain't coming back, coming back. And he went back, and he told him. So he began to follow him. He began, Elisha began to follow Elijah. Elijah, when he, when he threw that coat on him, he threw his covering over him. Are you with me? And Elisha gave up all, and he followed Elijah. That day four. When I say he gave up all, listen, a lot of people would hear that and say, oh, you mean I got to give. Listen, what he did is, you know what, he let go of everything else. When Jesus walked by and he called us out, it was to let go of the world and everything in the world, not to hold on to nothing else, to let everything go, not to, to have anything. That, watch, watch, watch this, y'all, not to have a plan B. Well, if this don't work, I'll fall back on this. He called us out to surrender. All and to follow him. Let everything go and to follow him. Now it says Elijah and Elisha came upon a place and a time that Elijah was about to be called home. That's where we are now. Elijah knew what was going on. He knew what was happening. He knew what was taking place. So he says this to Elijah in verse 2. He says, it says, then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. Well, watch this, y'all. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Elijah told Elisha, said, you know what, I'm, 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 I'm going on. He knew what was fixing to happen to him, so he said, I'm fixing to to go on to Bethel, you stay here. And Elisha said, nope. I made a commitment. Mm, somebody should have hollered right then. He said, I made a commitment to follow, and I'm, I'm not backing up. I made a commitment to follow to the end, and I'm not backing up. It goes on in the next verses, and it says that there were others that come along to Elijah, y'all, that tried to separate him. I want you to get your mindset. I want you to think about Elijah and Elisha, but I want you to think about your commitment and your walk the day that you call upon the name of the Lord. And if you hadn't, praise God, I believe today's going to be your day if you haven't already. But, but think about this, that, 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 that he, 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 people, as he went along the way, people was trying to distract him. People trying, things, things and people trying to keep, to cause him to separate. Some of the other folks come and said, don't you know he's leaving you today? Don't you know that he's going to be gone today? And Elijah had told him, he said, you know what, I know, just keep quiet. But, but they were saying, in other words, don't you know you're going to be alone? Watch this. You face things in life and everyday life with the trying times that you've had that people are trying to say, oh, you know what, you better do this because you ain't got nobody to help you. You ain't got this and you, hadn't, you don't have that to trying to separate. Things that you faced, things that you dealt with, and people around you that tried to, to, to cause us to lose our focus. They're saying, don't you know that you're not going to have him anymore? Somebody's catching on. And folks that have said, you know what, don't you know that, you know what, he's not there. Don't you know he's not listening? Yes, he is. Elijah tells him the same in verse 4. He says, stay here while I go on. And Elisha tells him the same thing again. He says, no. Then a third time, in verse 6, and Elijah tells him again, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I'll not leave you. In other words, he said, I'm not turning away. 
I'm with you. And nothing, nothing will separate me from you. Nothing, no matter what I face, no matter what I deal with, no matter what I'm going through. You see, Elisha was being tried. How many knows that we deal with things? John 16 and 33, Jesus said this. He said, in me you might have peace. He said, but in the, world, in the world, there's tribulations. You have trying times. There's things you face. Somebody knows about facing something. Amen. Dealing with things. And he said, he said in, in, in the world, you have tribulations. But he said this. He said, be of good cheer. I like to say it like this. Don't worry. Be happy. He said, for I have overcome the world. And if I'm walking with him, if I'm with him, and if he's in me and me in him, then if he's overcome the world, praise God, I've overcome too. Amen. We're overcomers. Amen. <laughs> but when I say, if I separate, if, I, if, I'm not, if I'm not walking with him, then you know what? All of a sudden, looks like this is happening, that's happening. Elijah was being tried, but he wasn't going to let anything stop him from following through with his commitment, from following through with what he said he was going to do, from following through, even though, you know what, things had come and tried to, 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 to tell him to turn away. He said, nope, you know what, I'm not turning back. I'm not stopping. Elijah's seen this. He's seen his faithfulness to follow. He's seen his commitment to not be separated, to say, you know what, no matter what happens, I'm going to do what I said. Elijah made a choice, a decision, when he let everything go. I tell people all the time, and I thank God for it, I, 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 and it's not nothing to do with me. And, and I promise you, God ain't done anything in my life he won't do in yours. But I remember that day, and I told you all about last week, when, 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 uh, they come by and got me, and we went that day. But I remember walking out that day when I received Jesus Christ as Lord and saved my life. And I remember telling some people not long after that, I said, you know what, I won't ever go back. And I had some people to tell me, you can't say that. I said, I promise you, I can. I just knew this. I knew I wanted out. I just didn't know how to get out. I wanted some hope. I just didn't know where to find hope. And when my life was changed, I knew it was like I, I've shared many times about going in that glass house and wandering through there and getting deeper in and, and thinking you ain't never going to get out and watching everybody out there thinking, you know what, they're there, but I can't get back there. But then Jesus getting you by the hand and bringing you out. And when you walked by that man that you gave your money, you said, you know what, you'll never get no more of my money because I'll never come back in here. I'll never come back in here. And I knew that I knew that I knew that there wasn't no turning back. And people say, well, but you face things. My gosh, facing things. The biggest trial in the world is trying to live without Jesus. That's real trials. Now, Christian folks come to Jesus and they break a fingernail and they call it a trial. Amen. Somebody might sit in your seat and they call it a trial. They say, you know what? <laughs> Folks took my seat. I ain't going back. Go home. Go home. Talk about, man, I'm in the, going through the worst trial I've ever been through in my life. Y'all real trials. <laughs> Real trials, it, it, that might have happened here today, amen. <laughs> Real trials is, is trying to go through everyday life without Jesus, y'all. And I knew that, you know what, I wasn't ever going to face anything any, any worse than what I had faced. You know, I read the Bible, I read Second uh, Peter 2 and 20 when it said, if you've been delivered from that pollution in the world and you get entangled back up in it again, it's going to be worse than it was before, and that scared me. I said, man, if it's, he's talking about worse, I can't deal with worse. I can't, I can't deal with worse. So, you know what, that was enough to push me forward. 
That was enough to push me forward. You know what? And, 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 and Elijah had made a commitment, and he knew he wasn't going back. He wasn't going to turn away from that commitment that he made. Amen? Verse 8 tells us that Elijah took his mantle. He took his mantle that he had. Watch this. Just to show Elisha. He was setting things up. He took his mantle and he struck the water. As they was headed to the Jordan, to go to across the Jordan, it said he took his mantle, he struck the water, and it said the Jordan split. It separated. And watch this. It said that they walked across on dry ground. Y'all, that's a miracle. I read that back when God parted the Red Sea. I was thinking a lot of people might miss that. It said they went across, but the part that got me, it said on dry ground. And I'm thinking that water's been running there for, for thousands of years, and all of a sudden, immediately it's separated, and immediately it's dry. God don't leave out no details. He don't miss nothing. You know what? You could part the water, but then get stuck in the mud. Amen. But God don't miss nothing. He, not only did he part the Red Sea, not only did he part the Jordan, but he dried the ground. And it said that as, as, as this happened, that Elijah and Elisha walked across on dry ground. Watch this. He was setting things up. He was setting things up to, to, to get Elijah ready. Watch this. For him to pass the torch. To do what took place. You see, Jesus said, you know what, I'm about to go to my Father. And he passed the torch to us. And in John 14 and 12, he said this. He said, the things I do, you can do also in even greater works. Elijah was setting this up because watch what happens. Y'all, verse 9 says, after they crossed over, Elijah says this to Elijah. He says, he says, what may I do for you before I'm taken from you? I've seen your commitment. I've seen your faithfulness. What can I do? What can I do for you? Tell me what I can do before I, before I go. And this is how Elisha answered him, y'all. He didn't say, look at here, if you're going to be gone, I'm going to need lots of money. He didn't say, you know what, I want, a, I want a house set up on the hill. I need this, I need that. He answered him this way, y'all. He said, please let a double portion of your spirit, your anointing, be upon me. Kind of like, you know what, when, 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 when Solomon had the dream and God said, whatever you shall ask for, I'll give you. You see, and a lot of folk would go with that mindset, boy, if I could have this amount of money and this amount of things. But you know what? Solomon said, give me your wisdom. Because he wasn't talking about the moment. He was talking about forever. How many knows that, you know what, he didn't have to ask for money. He became the richest king ever because, he, he, you know what, he was wise in his decisions. And Elisha didn't say, you know what, give me this, give me that. Elisha said, give me a double portion. Of your spirit. The spirit's upon you. What you walk with. What you walk out with. What you, what you do. Give me a double portion of what I've seen in you. Yo, you want to you walk in, in, the, in, the, uh, uh, in a way like you ain't never. You know what? Ask Jesus. Give me a double portion of what I've seen you walk with. What I've seen in you. What I've seen. He said, give me a double portion of your anointing. Your spirit. Listen to me. He said a double portion. Y'all, that's pretty bold. It's pretty bold. That's pretty confident. But listen to me. It could be. He could be bold. He could be confident. Why? Because he had made a commitment to endure to the end. He wasn't letting go. And he could come boldly. Somebody seeing something here. Somebody seeing what took place here. The same thing that could take place with us every day. Elijah was tried over and again. He went through some stuff. Somebody knows about going through some stuff. Somebody's been through some stuff. Seemed like that every time you turn around, something's hitting, something's happening. Amen. But watch this. Ain't nothing going to stop you. 
No matter what, God keeps showing up. God keeps being around. Even when you think that you don't know if you can endure no more, you don't know if you can go no more, God shows up and he puts somebody there and he does something because he ain't going to let you go. He's not going to let you go. And you know what? He was tried. Somebody feels like you've been through it. Say, man, man, it's been tough, man. But you know what? God knows your heart. He knows that you want to walk that walk. He knows you want to live that life. That's why he won't let go. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Elijah wouldn't turn away. He wasn't going to stop following. Now, as his faithfulness has been shown, Elijah asked him this question, and he boldly answered it. He gave a bold answer. Hebrews 4 and 16 says this, said, Come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obta- obtain what we, what we ask, that we may have what we ask for, that we may get it, y'all, that we may obtain it, that we may get what we ask. Come boldly. What's this? What does that mean? That means come, you know what, I can go without doubt because you know what, I know I made a commitment and I'm going to follow through with it. That I know that when I talk to him, that you know what, I got no doubt because you know what, I, what's this, I didn't make a commitment to follow the pastor. I didn't make a commitment to follow man and, and, and like the woman that came to Jesus after he had after he had forgiven her, after she had, had been forgiven of the sins. You know what? And I've shared this over and over again. But, but when she came in, and this is what I tell people all the time. I've had people, and I've had it shared many times, that people tell me, I got hurt in church. Now, you got hurt in a building by people, but you know what? Not in church, by the body of Christ. You know what? Not, not, not God didn't hurt you. And can't nobody run, him, run you away from him. They shouldn't be able to. Amen. That woman came in when everybody was talking about her. Everybody, all the disciples sat nobody talking about, oh, that's that woman. That's that woman got caught in the act. Like the rest of us ain't never done nothing. Hello? They said, that's that woman. That's that woman that's done this. That's that woman. You know what? When people do that, how people sit and sit in judgment. But you know what? She wasn't studying them. And I've shared it many times where she just waded through them. She said, y'all go ahead and gossip. Y'all go ahead and talk about me, talk about somebody else. I didn't come in here for you. I come in here to get to the feet of Jesus. I come in here to get to him, not to you. <laughs> and when we set our minds on that and we set our minds on him and then loving him, not just, just doing it because I, I'm trying to, to fill a religion, but loving him. You know what? She went to Jesus and she cried and she washed his feet with her hair and with her tears. Why? Because she was so in love with him for what he had done for her. And, and, and so many people get caught up, you know what, following man, following things. But you know what, he, he, was, he was doing what God had him doing and he wasn't going to turn away from it. So boldly he came because he could without doubt because he knew who he was in Christ. He could ask because he was enduring. And Elijah told him this. When he asked that, Elijah said this to him. He said, this is a hard thing that you've asked. It's a hard thing, but if you stay with me, if you continue to walk with me, somebody hear me. Somebody hear what I'm saying. He said, it's bold. You know what? This is, this is a hard thing that you've done, but if you, if you, if you, you remain with me. You don't turn away from me. Somebody's saying, but God, why is this not happening? Why is this not taking place? Why, why am I not getting this? Why is that not taking place? Why is that not, not, not coming in my life? Listen to me real close and listen. This God with a gentle voice, with a loving voice is saying, where did you go? Where did you go? I'm here. I've got what you need. I've got everything. But where did you go? Where did you go? I'm here. We say we say we want this to happen, that to happen. 
And we say, we'll be here. We're following through. We're committed. But where do we go? Separated. We want the blessings. We want the things. We want the promises. But are we willing to do what it takes to get them? Are we willing to do what it takes? Somebody see this. Elisha was shown along the way what could happen for him. He was shown what he could have. We're shown. God's shown us. We've seen him work. We've seen him move. We've seen him do things. And let me say this. I say it all the time. If there's anything you think is impossible, God, I want you to think first to think about this. If he could save us, what, is, what do we think that he can't do? If he could change us, what do we think he can't do? And we've been shown what can take place, what God can and what God will do. Now, said Elijah struck the water with his, with his mantle, and the water parted. And he went up in a chariot of fire. When they got to the other side, and it says his mantle fell down to Elisha. He passed on his mantle. He passed the torch. He passed on the anointing, the double portion. And it says that Elijah walked back up to the, to the river Jordan just to see if he got what he asked for. And it said he took the mantle. He struck the river Jordan. It parted. It parted. He endured, and he got what he asked for. He got the prize because he remained faithful. He endured. You have to endure to get the prize. Got to hang on. Got to press on. Paul says this in Philippians. He said, I press towards the mark, the prize, the goal, the high calling of God. That he has for me. I press toward the prize. There's times when, when, you know what? God's words talk to us about seasons. We deal with seasons. Everybody here has been through. Everybody watching, listen, has been through things. We've dealt with things. We've been through some things. And it's been some hard things. And the enemy's tried to use those things to separate us. To turn us away, to push us away, to get our focus on things instead of focusing on God. And all of a sudden, we look up one day and we go, where did my joy go? Where did my peace go? Where, where is, where is the, 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 the things that, that, that I walked in that I know, that I have felt? The things that I've seen what God has done in my life, where did it go? And God, with a sweet, gentle voice, says this. He said, where did you go? Where did you go? And you may have not uh, got caught up in the world's ways, but all of a sudden caught up in the surroundings. Caught up in, in, in the, the trials. Caught up in the tribulations. Caught up in the things that you were facing, the things you were dealing with. Caught up in the moment. It don't mean that you just turned away and, 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 and turned from God. But you know what? Maybe, you know what? Lost focus. What's the word for 2020? Focus. The word God gave us before the year started. And boy, what a word. With everything we've dealt with, everything we've been through, everything, we've got to stay focused on God. But God is also saying focus on what we've seen him do through 2020. Focus means Finish our commitment united strong. I can't let go. I can't turn back. God's done way too much for me. He's been way too good for me. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm not letting go. Y'all, Elijah didn't say what he would do. Listen to me real close. He did what he said. Can somebody hear me? He didn't just say it, he did it. He did what he said he was going to do. Does somebody hear me? When he left, 
when he, when he gave everything up and he started to follow, he said, you know what, there ain't no turning back for me. When Jesus walked by and called me and you out, we have to say, you know what, I don't know what, what this, that's what I said that day. I said, I don't know what this life is. I don't know what Christian living is, but it's got to be better than what I've been living. And I knew this, that no matter what, that there wasn't no turning back. I don't know what I'm going to face. I don't know what I'm dealing with. But you know what? One thing I know is I'm not dealing with it by myself because he promised me he'd never leave me nor forsake me. Amen. He said he'd be with me always. <laughs> so I know this. I might not know what, what, what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. Amen. I know this. I know that, that whatever I deal with, God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than I could ever ask or think of, as long as I believe. As long as I believe. Amen. Y'all, we have to remain. We have to follow through. And we got to remember that we're not walking this out alone, y'all. And, and let me say this to you. My walk is not today and Wednesday. My walk is 24-7. You know what? Tomorrow I'll go forth, but I'm not, I'm not just going forth thinking, man, I can't wait to get back to church so I can be with Jesus. No, he's going to be with me tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And to understand that, 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 that I, got to, I, I got to wake up every day and know that, and know that, that, that he's with me and he knows how to take care of me and he knows what, what needs to happen and everything that I do. I'm not alone. He's with us, y'all. He's with us. Not only is he with us, listen to me real close. He's for us. Man, that made me holler. I just did a spiritual backflip. I just flipped all the way. Y'all didn't even see that, did you? Man. To think that that, that not only is he, is he with us, but he's for us. And if he's for us, who can be against us? Y'all, to, to know that, 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 that at times when it, when it seems like, even in your thoughts, that, that he can't hear, yeah, he's hearing. There's seasons, and you deal with stuff, and you go through stuff. But to know that he's with you when you go through it. Y'all, he's with us. We know what we want. Amen. We know what we want. And we can go boldly before the Lord and get it. We know what we want, and we can go boldly before God and get it. We can have it. Listen to me. If we won't let anything separate us from him, anything separate us from our walk with him, he called us out. He walked by us, just like he did Peter and Andrew, and he said, come follow me. To say this, to say, you know what, because I got a lot to show you. I got a lot for you to see. I got a lot for you to learn. I got a lot for you. He called us out, just like, just like what Elijah did with Elijah. Elisha. He said, come follow me. But he didn't say, just follow me. Because I got a religion for you. He said, you know what? I'm going to teach you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to help you. Let me say this to you. When my life was changed, my son was three years old. And I can tell you, I didn't know one thing about being a daddy. And I know that if God hadn't changed my life, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been one. I wouldn't have been in his life. I didn't know one thing about being a daddy. And I prayed one day, and I said, God, I don't know. He said, you don't know how. And I cried. I said, you're right. You know what? I don't. He said, but I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you. But I said, God, I, I can't do this. I don't know, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to, to, for it. And he said, I'll show you. That's why he said, come follow me. I'm going to show you. He said, I'll teach you how to be a daddy. I'll teach you how to be a man. I'll teach you how to be all things. But you know what? You got to remain with me. You got to stay with me. 
And you know what? If we do that, we could go boldly because a father and child relationship, you know what? My little girl don't have a problem to say, Daddy, I want this. I need this. Daddy, can I have this? Because we have that kind of relationship. If we have that with our father, then we go and we say, Father, you know, I need your help. And he said, I am your help. I am your help. Y'all, our walk is to follow and, and to stay close. The closer you are to him, the easier it is to hear. You know what? I'm not a rocket scientist, so that makes it better. If they're talking right there, you know what? I might not hear them, but the closer I get, I can hear. You might say, you know what? I can't hear from God. Get closer to him. Amen. It said he spoke to Elijah in a soft, still voice. Get closer to him. Listen to me. Get everything else out of the way. Everything out of the way. God brought this word for all of us today. Everybody here, everybody watching and listening, he brought this word for this, this purpose, this reason, to help us understand. And I believe there's people here, I believe we've all dealt with that time where we thought, man, God, I don't know what's happening with me. Anybody ever lived in the I don't know? Praying it. God, I don't know. God, I don't know why this happened. God, I don't know. God, I don't even know if you hear me. God, I don't know. God, he said, you know what? Come here, come here, come here. Get up here with me. God is out to get you. He's out to get you up in his arms and to hold us and to love us and say, I got you. I got you. I got this. I got you. He showed me how to be a daddy. And you know what? Now he showed my son how to be a daddy. And he's going to show Lawson, his son, how to be a daddy. He's going to show, you know what? Everybody that goes down through the generations. And I know I'm not the only one here that, that was concerned. I was saying, God, I want to make sure that they grow up in the right way. He said, get close to me. Stay close to me. Stay close. Y'all, our walk. And let me see, our walk starts this way. I said earlier that if you hadn't, this is, the, this is your day. But our walk starts by asking Jesus into our hearts. Our walk starts by believing that he died for our sins. And he rose again. We sang the song earlier. You know what? That he, he died. He, he, he that knew no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. He that had no sin, you know what? Made way for us the forgiveness of our sin. Y'all, he's alive and well. Sitting at the right hand of the Father. Thanks for joining us today, Lighthouse Church and the service. We're so glad you could be with us. And want you to know that God's Word says that, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you made a decision today, or if your heart is moved to make that decision, God's Word says that, you know what, if you call upon Him and, and declare Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, you know what, you're saved. If you've made that decision, we want to know and we want to hear from you. Contact us as you read below. It will tell you exactly the way that you can contact and let us know. And we're so glad that you was with us and pray that you continue to tune in or come be with us. God bless you. Have a blessed day.